Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. You're with the next installment in our review of the Dvorak cycle on SWR Music, Symphony Number no. 1, which was, I think, the first release in this series. It says Complete Symphonies Volume 1. Um, and at this point, uh, the series was still on Hensler. After SWR went its own way, now everything else is on SWR Classic which this may now be, I don't know, but this is the one I have. Um, it's another fine performance featuring uh, Carol Mark Chichon um, with the the Deutsche Radio Philharmonie Saarbrücken Kaiserslautern, uh, which everyone just calls the Deutsche Radio Philharmonie because it's easier, much easier. Uh, where do these names come from? Well, they just, they merge and remerge and they keep all their old names and it just becomes a whole thing. Anyway, Dvorak's First Symphony is a beautiful work. And one of the nice things about this is that you can get it separately here. So you can just listen to it all by itself. Usually what happens is that Dvorak cycles, they issue individual discs and they shove them all in a box. And you can't get individual symphonies if you want to hear just one, if you want to buy just one. Of course, with streaming, you can do all of that now. So I'm assuming this is available that way. But, you know, the First Symphony is a remarkable work. Dvorak never heard it. Um, he wrote it. It was his Opus 3, and it disappeared, and it turned up in like 1961 or something like that, or 1930-something, but it wasn't published till the 1960s. Um, it's subtitled The Bells of Zlonice, which is a, a town somewhere in that part of the world. Um, the opening the opening motive on the horns, which returns in the finale, by the way, it's a cyclical form, um, does have a bell-like tone to it. But the thing that makes it so cool is that you can tell it's Dvorak. I mean, right away, you can tell it's Dvorak. Is it formally his most, you know, concise piece? Well, no. I mean, the finale is kind of a hot mess in places. But what what really makes it special is just the wonderful energy that it has and those characteristic tunes. The second subject, da 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 ba da 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 to do a bunch of Liszt Hungarian rhapsodies. And he also called it tone poem or symphonic poem. It was influenced by Liszt. He was writing in the 1870s. Um, he wrote the three Slavonic rhapsodies a few years later, um, more on Slavonically sounding type themes. This is a little bit more Liszt slash Wagner-ish, but it's still, it's a powerful piece. And what makes it wonderful to couple with the first symphony, which of course, the guy who wrote the notes doesn't mention it at all, why would he want to mention that, is the fact that one of its main themes is the trio of the scherzo of the First Symphony. da 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 ba dum bum ba da 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 dum bum ba Like, you know, you'll hear it right away. So the two pieces are kind of related because Dvorak thought that the First Symphony was lost forever. And as soon as he lost it, he went and wrote another one, the Second Symphony, which was a big a big step forward. I mean, he was he was growing by leaps and bounds. But, you know, what, what amazes me about this symphony, given the fact that he never heard it, is just how good it sounds. I mean, when you think about it, you know, I mean, he's a young composer. He has no exposure at all. He had no opportunity performance. performance. He writes a gargantuan symphony and and never has a chance to actually listen to it. And yes, it has issues of balance and there's some strange orchestral things like it has two bars for English horn in the middle of a tutti. I mean, you could leave it out. Nobody would care. You know, it, it has its oddnesses of the fruits of inexperience. But by and large, I mean, that first movement is so exciting and so driving. I mean, it really is. It's almost all exposition, by the way, the repeat of which is not taken here, which is fine with me. You really don't need it because half the movement is exposition. Then there's like a little development thing and then, then it just keeps on developing right up until the end. But wow, that first movement's powerful. It has so much energy and this performance has that energy. You know, Chichon just drives it forward. He really does without making it sound breathless. I mean, there's it relaxes for the lyrical episodes and whatnot, but, but basically it's really pretty thrilling. And even if the rest of the symphony were not as good as it is, I mean, this first movement justifies a listen. The slow movement 
Well, it doesn't have Dvorak's best tunes, except for the horn fanfare that comes back. Da dum bum ba dum bum bum. Da dum bum ba dum bum bum. Da dum bum ba da dum. That works just fine. The scherzo is delightful, kind of Mendelssohnian in places, but but again, it has it has more of that Czech folk sort of sound to it. The finale, okay. Da dum ba dum ba dum ba da da dum ba da. You know, it's one of those up and down tunes that you can't really do anything to except repeat. But it has lots of other material as well, um, and it keeps on going and going and going and ends eventually. Um, it's kind of Brucknerian actually, although you know it's contemporary with Bruckner and Dvorak wouldn't have heard any of Bruckner. It it has that feel. It's all part of that wonderful Central European ambience. You know, wherever the folk tunes come from doesn't really matter. It's just it's just fresh and lovely music, and you could hear the budding genius in it, chomping at the bit. And this performance brings those qualities out. And as I said, the Rhapsody is a considerable bonus, so I would really give this a shot if I were you. And if you don't know the first, just sit back and play it, listen to it with an open mind, and you'll be very, very pleasantly surprised. I guarantee it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.